Justin, I want to welcome you to our first summer series of an Enneagram community. We have found that the Enneagram courses and workshops that we've been doing for the last three months have been some of our most popular and well attended. And several people said, well, hey, why can't we just create a community that meets every Friday and talks about the Enneagram from all kinds of different perspectives. And so that's what we're going to do um, today and every Friday um, from here to eternity. So uh, welcome to the first day of the rest of your life uh, doing Enneagram together. Um, I do believe the Enneagram is a really powerful wisdom tool that's been given to us for self-growth and cultivating healthy uh, individual and uh, and interpersonal relationships. And so Interfaith Paths to Peace is really captivating on the power of the Enneagram to help us in our inner journey and also to help us on our interpersonal journey of creating healthy and peaceful relationships. So welcome to the Enneagram community. Um, the rest of the month, next week, we're gonna jump into looking at just the three triads. So the Enneagram is made up of the head triad, the heart triad, and the instinct triad. And we're going to jump into doing a deep dive next week into the heart triad. And so I'm going to have specific people that I know identify with those numbers, which is number two, three, and four. And um, we're going to do a real deep dive into the heart triad. That's next week. And then we'll do the head triad. And then we'll end the last week in June with the uh, instinct triad or the gut triad. And um, and then we're going to start July with a, a program called Enneagram and Money, which will be really an interesting way to frame how we relate to money based upon our Enneagram typology. So I uh, hope you'll put those down and look forward. Just put uh, Fridays at three o'clock down on your calendar every week. You can just do that. Um, when you put it in your calendar, you can say, yes, continue every week for the rest of eternity. So um, Anyway, thank you all for being here. Again, uh, I, I, what I like about the Enneagram or processing the Enneagram is for us to, uh, from the narrative tradition, which is Helen Palmer's tradition, is that we really learn best the, the Enneagram when we hear people speak about it or how they experience themselves rather than taking a test or just you know, reading about them in a book. Let's hear each other tell stories about what it means to be a seven or an eight or whatever number you might be. So I'm gonna encourage us to do that today. I'm also gonna do something new today. Um, I'm gonna focus in on what's called the, um, the subtypes. Uh, I haven't done a whole lot of work in the past uh, with uh, this group anyway on subtypes. And so I'm gonna jump in uh, today and look at subtypes. Um, and use subtypes and the number as a way of talking about social change. So there's two kind of lenses that I'm wearing. One is to look at how individual numbers may engage in social change. And then I'm also going to be using subtypes to, to look at those numbers. So you'll see as we get in what we're going to be doing there. Here are some goals of our time together. One will just be an overview of the Enneagram and social change, why we're focusing on social change. Second, well, we're going to explore the gifts and challenges of each of the personality types. And I'm going to encourage you all that are on Zoom to jump in and share insights uh, when we come to your number, if you would be willing to do that. And then the third is, how can we uh, specifically ask some questions? Uh, the, the timing of the social change focus is definitely on purpose, um, because I really am wanting to encourage us uh, to be engaged right now in our world, specifically around um, racial equality and the issues that are sweeping across our nation and globe. And um, this is the reason why um, I wanted to use the Enneagram, because I think there are a lot of people that really want to engage the issues that are going on in our world today. Um, but there is sometimes a judgment that we do to ourselves about we ought to all be doing, we ought to all be marching, or we ought to all be organizing, or we ought to all, you know, and so we get into this, um, sometimes in the social change world, social justice world, we, we give these messages that we all ought to be doing it in a certain way. And um, my position on that is I think we all need to focus 
our natural gifts um, to the area in which we can make change, or not to the area in which we can make change, but the way in which we can go about making change. Um, and, and really stay grounded in who we are in the way we make change and not get into this, oh, I wish I should have or I ought to. Because I think when we get into that kind of language in social change, we don't work out of our energy and we don't work out of our groundedness in who we are. And so the lens I'm really wanting us to wear is to, to stay close to the gifts uh, of all of these different types and just be you and focus you on creating a more equitable, uh, racial equitable uh, world. So how do you um, take who you are and focus it right now really intentionally on the issue of um, creating more equitable and um, uh, a world where there's not racial bias and discrimination. So uh, that is really kind of what I'm hoping we'll focus on our uh, efforts today. So um, the Enneagram, the Enneagram, a real short introduction, is basically a way of looking at different, nine different personality types. The idea behind the Enneagram is that these, our number was formed in early childhood as we uh, tried to adapt and thrive in our early childhood environment. So because we all came from these um, different kind of childhood environments, um, we tried to cope, we tried to thrive as children, which shaped the things that we perceived and it shaped our behaviors. So as children, we were trying to manage our early childhood environment and we started to become aware of certain things uh, and, and we started behaving in certain ways. That created these patterns uh, in our brain um, so sometimes I like to think about an Enneagram brain so that your number really is this firing of certain neurons that, that help you perceive certain things and then uh, become patterns of behavior. And so what we're doing with Enneagram work is we're trying to cultivate uh, what we call the witness. Um, what is the... Um, what is that part of us that can watch ourselves arise? And that's what we can learn and how we can learn to work with the, uh, the Enneagram. There's been a request in the chat room, which I think is a great re request. Why don't we, um, is to introduce ourselves um, and uh, maybe share what number we are. So as we get into this, let's, um, I'm gonna take a pause in a moment before we get into the specifics. And let's um, have a large group check-in. So those of you that are on, if you don't mind, um, well, oh my gosh, we've got a big group. Maybe it's too big to do a check-in. Wow, what a wonderful group of people. So I'm gonna not do a check-in. I apologize, I'm gonna go back to the screen because that could, here's what you could do. If you check on your name, you can type in your Enneagram number. So let's do it that way. So if you check on your box and go up to the three dots and look down, you can actually rename yourself. And so rename yourself and I am an Enneagram seven number. So let us all take a chance to do that and we'll know where we're speaking from. If those of you that don't know how to do it, um, uh, don't worry about it. But um, yeah, there you go. That will give us some way of knowing who's what. Um, and then once we get into the conversation, you'll be able to uh, share more. So, I hope that meets the need of the, the, um, the group to know what our numbers are. Thank you for that recommendation in the chat box. So here we go, let's jump into, again, as, as I was saying, these, that's how the Enneagram numbers, and so each of these types has some traits to them. And what I wanna look at today is I wanna use what's called subtypes. So for each of the nine numbers, there are different personality traits and behaviors that go along with those types. Um, I'm not going to go into the full scope of the Enneagram, um, but uh, um, look at all the different dynamics. We're mainly going to stay with what are the types of the numbers. You can look at lines of integration and disintegration. You can look at levels of health, but that's not what we're specifically interested in. We're interested in how these numbers engage in social change. I'm gonna pull some work from, um, actually that's not the slide I wanted. I'm gonna pull some work from uh, looking at subtypes 
from this Enneagram and Archetypes book by Susan Rhodes. She takes different archetypes and looks at the different numbers, and we're going to come back to this slide in a moment. Um, and so we'll use this to go through the different types. What I uh, would like to do, though, is um, describe, she goes into what's called subtypes. And so I'm going to describe subtypes. because So a subtype would nuance your number based upon these typologies. And um, those are these, there's three subtypes. Um, sometimes they call them instinctual subtypes. Um, so the first is what we call self-preservation. So those um, self-preservation are, they're concerned with values of safety, provision, and comfort above all else. The need uh, focus is to survive through reserving, gaining, or uh, needing resources. So um, one day I like to uh, help people describe which of these they are. When you first walk into a room, what do you become aware of? So ask yourself that question. Self-preserving types, when they first walk into a room, become aware of the temperature. They become aware of what's the most comfortable seating. They become aware of it, where's the good food. So they're aware of their physical surroundings and wanting to seek comfort and maybe safety. So um, think about that. Um, the sexual, or I like to call this, they often call this the one-on-one -on -one rather than the sexual. Um, here, the value is intensity of experience in chemistry. Where is their attraction? Where's the draw? And the need is focused on deep intimacy, uh, usually with one other people or a really small group above all else. So when they walk into a room, they're interested in where's the energy? You know, where's the person in this room that they just uh, feel like has got the most energy or that they, they may be actually attracted to for some reason, not necessarily sexually, but just like a, a chemistry. So they're really interested in where's the energy in the room and who's the person that they're gonna go and sit next to because they think may have that energy and connection. The third type is what called the social type. And they value um, questions about where they are in the hierarchy of social relationships. Where do they fit in this group socially? Uh, and the need focus is to contribute to society and be known in a communal way. So, um, they walk into the room and they're really concerned about where do I fit in the social hierarchy or what's my place in the community. So that's one of the things I want you to think about. Do you identify as a self-preserving type, a one-on-one -on -one sexual type, or a social type? Um, is, which one of these is your primary concern? And they are going to nuance your number. And I'll show you in a moment, a minute, how they um, they do that. Are there any uh, questions at this point about subtypes? Um, you can raise your hand or just jump in. I haven't done a lot of, um, at least with these calls, I haven't done a lot of subtype work. Does anybody have any additions to describing the subtypes that you would like to jump in and add? You're welcome to unmute yourself. If you were on uh, Facebook Live, uh, you're welcome to add that in the chat box if you have a question or a comment. Any, of, any questions or comments um, before we go ahead? Yeah, Fran. I've done a very little bit with the subtypes, but my main takeaway is that even though these are the broad descriptions applied to each type, they look really different. <laughs> Um, so I don't, I don't, I don't quite have them down yet. Um, yeah. Well, when we look at, um, we'll go through the numbers and you'll see, uh, well, let me just show you how we're going to look at them. There's a chart. Of course, I love my charts, right? Everybody <laughs> loves the charts. Here is a, a, what's called the 27 paths of life. There's some people that have done a lot of work with subtypes. Um, and so what we're going to do, what we're about to do, is go through each number and look at how their subtype may influence their, um, 
and this uh, is comes from uh, this archetype work. So they have a, an archetype like the pioneer who is a self-preserving type, right? So they're, they're interested in their, their, their bio, their needs, their, their needs for safety and comfort. That's called the pioneer. And then the one-on-one is called the evangelist. And then the social type is called the social reformer. So we're going to look at those and then we're going to ask the question, what are the gifts and challenges of a one for social change? So you see all the little maps that we're putting on that and that will help us to to differentiate these. So when you share, um, you might want to share which of those three you identify with if even after you share what your number might be. So I hope that brings clarity. Was there another question or a comment? Looked like somebody else unmuted themselves. Um, I was just going to comment uh, briefly, Jed, if, uh, give, just to give a small example. My husband is a self, I believe, is a self-preservation. And I respond as a social. So is the example of what that looks like. So Derek, in, when the pandemic hits, and it's, you know, starts to worsen up. First of all, he is the first one to start like saving canned goods and stuff like that, because he also has a six wing in him. But his first instinct is to start saving up, getting food and doing things to prepare for the house. He's like thinking about getting new windows. I'm like, it's a pandemic, but you're thinking about getting new windows. And I'm wanting to go out and, you know, take food to the food bank and check in on our neighbors. Or So our direction in times of stress can be uh, in the opposite direction. So I have to really remind myself that my impulse to do what I do is just the same impulse that he has and have a little grace for each other because it can seem like we're conflicting, but actually in some ways we get it all done at the end of the week too. So, yeah. And so, so let's just jump in and start, let's just start using this. So let's start with the one. Um, so the one is the perfectionist. Um, they're very concerned about doing the right thing. So if we think about social change, boy, the, there's a lot of ones that are engaged right now because this really taps into one's uh, sense of what is good and right. And one, really healthy ones are social reformers in, in and of themselves. It's really interesting that, but they can also be very interested in law and order. So a lot of police officers and judges are ones and lawyers are ones. Um, so it's really interesting. You can also have a one that's a, you know, just a really strong activist because they're very concerned about um, doing things right. And if somebody has been hurt or not treated right or fairly, they're very attuned to that. They're also very attuned to that within themselves. And so they feel a lot of pressure to do things right, um, to be good. And, um, so a lot of folks right now that are interested in social change and these issues are engaged in that. But you can see how the different self, so you may have a one that's the evangelist. And so they want to, they really want to talk about what's going on right now. They want the energy of these one-to-one connections around this issue. And they may be out. And so the social type also may be out because they're the social reformer. They may be out protesting. These would probably be, but a one that's a self-preservation type would not go out and protest because they would be concerned about their body. They'd be concerned about the virus. Um, so again, just because if you're out in the street protesting and you're a one, doesn't, doesn't mean, just because you're a one doesn't mean you're going to be out in the street protesting because your, your uh, subtype may change the way in which you do that. It also doesn't mean you, you may be a police officer and you may be very concerned about law and order and very concerned that rioters are, are, are breaking things and there's chaos in the world. So you may not actually, there will be ones that may not be supportive of the riots for whatever reasons, right? Because they're concerned about order. Um, but you may have people on the other side being like, well, you know, um, black people, people of color uh, have been mistreated and it's worth showing up and being angry about, like being critically, being very critical of, of ways in which people have been hurt and abused. So if you're a one, um, do we have any ones on the call? Can you talk some about the way in which you're framing what's going on right now and the way in which you engage? I'm not seeing any ones necessarily. Terry, you might, you have some one, maybe. 
Yes, I had already spoken, so I was yeah. maybe waiting to see if someone else. Anybody else? Sarah, did you unmute yourself? You want to share? So I know a lot of ones, um, and, and they do seem really engaged right now. Actually, I, I, I've been really interested in the ones in my life um, that are very concerned about the mistreatment uh, of people of color. And um, they are responding in different ways, but they're very engaged right now. And I think they can provide really beautiful and profound articulation of how people have been abused. So my call to ones would say, take your keen insight and write about it or speak about what, what ways we are not living up to a moral standard because ones have a really good understanding of the, what we ought to be doing morally. So ones out there, uh, use your, your gift of, of being right, doing right, um, and then focus that out into the world. So um, Gandhi was a one, right? So you wanna talk about some social change folks that got it going on. Ones, when they um, really feel morally um, driven to do what is right can make significant, really significant change. So does anybody wanna comment on, on ones there? Not, we'll move on to our twos. Let's do that. So our twos is the helper. So again, our helper has, um, they, the early childhood environment is um, uh, do good to be loved or give love to get love. And so they're very uh, interested in interpersonal relationships. They're also the most highly attuned on the Enneagram to emotions. They have really high uh, emotional intelligence. So, um, and they really feel what's happening in society. The twos that I know, uh, as soon as um, a lot of twos with the, uh, the COVID crisis started getting sick, and not necessarily with the virus, but they started embodying the sickness of our society. And so I found a lot of twos really taking on the physical ailment um, of the virus, even if they didn't have the virus. And I found that to be really interesting because they're so empathetic. They've learned to be empathetic. They're also, I think, very emotionally attuned to what's going on in our culture. So I think twos in their empathy ha um, have to guard themselves. Otherwise, they can just get washed away in the the emotions that are happening in our culture right now. Um, but that's the real gift they bring to social change, the real nurturing. Um, I know a two um, that is, is really involved in um, uh, the Black Lives Matter movement, and her commitment has been to care for the needs. She always has water, and she has hand sanitizer, and she has food for those who are protesting. Right, that's a great way a two can nurture the lives of those that are out there protesting right now. And, and they don't necessarily want to be out, I mean, they are out there, but they're not, um, they're out there caring for protesters and really practical needs that they're meeting. Um, and so uh, I think twos can do a really good job of that. And I think a lot of twos are framing their ability to care for people. Um, I know another two, um, that said that she in the morning had been choosing uh, five to 10 people of color just to write an email to or a text message to letting them know that they're cared for, right? Because they can feel um, how people are experiencing this time. And the real practical way they spend 20, 30 minutes in the morning just sending out personal notes. Um, and doing these little personal things that people really recognize. So are there any twos on here that um, may want to speak to that? Looks like we have a couple. Um, anybody want to jump in there and talk about where you may be, the nurturer, the lover, or the ambassador? Right, those are kind of the subtype characteristics. 
Anybody want to jump in and talk about those? All right, we'll keep going. We can always come back. The three, the performer. Again, we've moved into what's called the heart triad. So the two and the three are within the heart triad. Um, the three, uh, as the performer and achiever, got and get, got love by being doing things excellently. Well, they performed and achieved at a real high level, and so that message got. Um, got re told or that message is really strong. If I'm going to get love and attention, I have to perform and achieve. Um, we often talk about three, uh, the United States is a three culture. It can be, um, very concerned about how I look and how I come across to people to be seen as doing things right. Um, and around social change threes, um, you know, I think threes, if they feel like it's, it's the, it's the appropriate thing to do right now and to be the best social activists you can be. I think threes tell themselves, like, what does it mean for me to be the best social activist? What does it mean for the best protester? You know, so I think those are the messages that go on in threes, which, you know, hey, that's okay. And that's, a, that's the, I think we always have this weird dynamic with threes. Like we want them to be healthy, but we also like that they're really out there kind of, blowing it out right they're the they they really do good at a lot of stuff like that sometimes it may not come from the best place in themselves and so i think that would be our challenge to threes really be leaders a lot of threes are organizational uh company leaders and it's really important for threes right now to have a voice in their companies and in their organizations to come out um really strongly for what's going on right now so threes um do that. Um, take take leadership. Group threes are really great leaders, um, and um, threes be very aware of. And this may this may sound like a critique. I don't mean it as a critique as much of a challenge. And maybe this is for all of us. It's the uh, taking the selfie at the riot, right? You know. So uh, and I've got. I want to make sure I've got my mask on. You know, if all threes are going to be in a riot, they're They'll probably have their mask on because they're doing it right. I, I'm just making assumptions. You may be a three and you may say, you know, I don't do that. But the caricature is that, you know, they're going to take the picture with their Black Lives Matter sign um, and their, uh, their mask on at the, at the rally. And I'm not saying that's not authentic. I'm just, um, the challenge for threes, um, so when this is not a hype, still engage this issue. Right, because threes will have a tendency to find what's the next issue that's popular, uh, and they'll get on that bandwagon. Uh, so this is where a three, and it's healthy, goes to a six, right? As a loyalist. So threes get on board here, and then move to your loyalists and stay on board here. That's what we want to say to threes. Um, don't go. Uh, yeah, this is this is maybe the issue of our time, or at least for the next five years. Let's all commit to, to making a difference on this issue. And threes, we want you to stay in there with us because there are going to be other issues that pop up, maybe even next week, right? That's the fear, is that there's going to be something else that takes our attention and we're not going to do the work we need to do here. So you also are hearing my commentary, so I hope you all give me a little grace on all that. So are there any threes want to talk about the ways in which you engage and do social change? We don't actually have, it doesn't look like a whole lot of threes on here. Anybody want to speak to that? The threes are out there having fun. So they're not on the Zoom call. <laughs> yeah, they're probably out, out uh, <laughs> doing it, getting engaged in it. All right, let's go to the fours. Um, fours is the tragic romantic. Um, um, fours have a sense that um, they like to be different and they like the darker emotions. Uh, they also have a very high emotional intelligence, but they go in with that. So twos go out. Fours go in with their emotional intelligence. So they like the deeper, darker emotions. 
I think this can be a real challenging time for fours because they do pick up on the, the real hard emotions that are happening. They can get lost in that in a way that becomes depression. But a four that goes to a one is a real, like that's Bono. Bono is a four that went to a one in a healthy space. And he took those emotions and he directed them towards social change. And so fours can be really powerhouses in social change, but they need to um, uh, not get lost in the darker emotions. But they are also the artists. And this is where I really want to ask fours to show up, right? So fours, I do believe that our artists, musicians will lead the way in social change. Because what artists do is they, they discern the collective unconscious that emerges in them and then they can express it in their art. And then the rest of us can see it. So they can paint a world. They can make music about a world that we all want to live in. Uh, music fueled the movement of the 60s. You know, jazz music, soul music became the expression of the pain of the people. And then, you know, all the great 60s and 70s songs that we still sing, right? I mean, you, you go to a, a march and we're still singing those songs that came out of that tradition. Um, and, you know, out of the deep, uh, out of the, the slavery tradition, those deep soul songs that expressed their hopes and their pain. So fours, take all of that emotion that we know you're aware of and then express it in some way that we can all see it and we can all get behind it and it motivates us and it gives us a vision of the world we want to live in. So I, I'm all excited about fours right now because I think you guys are leaders of social change. Um, and thanks for being you. And um, yeah, help us, help us see a world that's different and paint it, um, write about it, um, express it for us so that, that we, you can motivate us for change. So there's some fours on here. Hey. Hey, who, who is Amber? This is Amber. Hey. Woo, woo. I mean, if we're going to talk about a four and here she shows up, it's like the State Farm man. We just said <laughs> fours and Amber just poof, just came oh, out of yeah. nowhere. <laughs> I know I finally got to catch one. I've been interested in Enneagram for a, a while. But yes, yeah. I am a four with a wing five. And so I've been feeling, just as you said, just this uh, romanticism about it. And so um, as... As crazy as it's all been, um, I've just really been focused on my art and really just trying to express myself through my art um, and even through the creativity of, of my business as well. And, um, and um, I also activate myself through um, a, a healthy one um, when I can uh, express these artistic endeavors and um, you know, project them to social change. So it's kind of like my protest right now. Uh, yes. <laughs> creativity and um, just, yeah, I have a, just a deep, deep emotional um, connection to not only a, a collective, but um, individual people as well. So yeah, it, yeah, it goes into my. <laughs> Amber, can, Amber, can I put you on the spot? Do you happen to have one of your paintings around? Uh, I can grab one. Go grab one. Okay. Um, and I'll do it. We'll look at the, the subtypes for a second until you get back. Um, right. But the creative, uh, the, the subtypes are the creative individualist, the dramatic person, and that's the sexual type. Uh, um, and then the critical commentator is the social type. So you're uh, the four in the um, self-preservation is called the creative individualist. And the sexual or the one on one is the dramatic person, and the critical commentator is um, the social. You got one, Amber? Yeah. Um, Show it to us. I'm going to pull us off of that screen and okay, can sure. we see it? Yeah, hold on. Let me see. Turn my camera around. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Well, here's just one example. I showed this on my interview. Last yes. Night. This is, you know, a somewhat old picture, but it just has a lot to do with how I'm feeling right now. Just the unification of us all being able to understand each other. And so, um, of course, this is old, but 
this is just something that I've always um, I felt within my heart. So this is just an example of expression of my emotional um, connection to uh, mass consciousness and oops, sorry, um, and everything. So yeah. One form of expression. <laughs> That's beautiful. What a beautiful. <laughs> what a great example of like fours channeling that energy in a way that in that picture says a lot right there. Um, the power of the feminine, and the power of blackness, the, the blueness, the integration of, of you as a person and all those pieces. So thank you. What a great example. Thanks for being on. Anything else, Amber, that you uh, would say, you want to say about being a four in social change? Um, also, just want to mention the fact that I am a, a four wing five. Uh, I also lean towards a more intellectual, logical understanding of, of well, it's like I am emotional <laughs> and I'm emotional about, uh, emotional <laughs> about a lot of things, but I frame it within an intellectual um, way for me to better understand it. So it's it's kind of like how I process yeah. um, the energy. That's good to me. <laughs> That's fabulous. If you all, uh, uh, after the pandemic is over, uh, go out and have a cup of coffee with Amber. You will have an amazing conversation. It's just, she's just fabulous. Uh, Amber, thanks for being on the call today. No problem. Thank you all. Uh, anybody else with fours um, want to say anything there? We move on to the fives. So the five is the observer. They're the most uh, introverted on the Enneagram types, and they're probably least likely maybe to be out protesting. Maybe, I don't, I'm gonna make assumptions there, but they are the most introverted. Um, they learned as um, often as children to get away from conflictual uh, environments or disturbing environments by going and sitting in their closet and reading a book. So they, they, we moved into the head triad here, which is a really important thing to say. So they're, they're working with um, thinking uh, and doing um, and anxiety. So fives uh, went into their head as a way of dealing with anxiety, and they became a really good um, observers, witnesses. Um, Buddha was a five, and a lot of Buddhist practices, five practice, um, they... Um, Again, it, 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 sometimes as a retreat from the chaos of the world, they can go inward. And that's, I think, what fives have to be very aware of right now is that they're not going so inward. Um, they actually kind of like pandemic. I know a couple of fives that are like, wow, finally the world is uh, wanting to live the way I naturally show up in the world. Um, and so I think fives, uh, it, it's good that they can be there. They can also be... Uh, innovative a lot of fives are very innovative and creative and they see a lot of things so if you want commentary you want really good thoughtful commentary on what's going on ask a five because they probably read a lot about it they know a lot about the pandemic right they've read the book they love the science of the coronavirus and they also love love the science of um uh or the the writings around social change so you may find that there are activated right now because they're going back and they're reading uh, all about critical whiteness studies or they're reading about, um, you know, uh, large social movements or they're reading about the, the experience of uh, uh, African-American people and the history of, of slavery and emancipation. So they really like reading those books and they have a lot of good information to give us and tell us. Um, so the, um, the castle defender, the secret agent, and the professor are kind of the, the archetypes of the five. Um, I'm really excited right now. I'm feeling pretty healthy so because I'm, I'm a seven, but I've got a lot of five going on right now, right? This professor thing, I'm really into my head. I feel like at times I may want to escape there. Um, The Castle Defender and the Secret Agent. So anybody five um, that wants to talk about how you're engaging? Have any other comments here? Michelle, I know you you're a, say you're a four or five. I don't know if you want to jump in on any comments there. Again, I'm not 
want to call anybody out that didn't want to speak, but <clears throat> if you'd no, like to. I, I, I mean, I was just, I know my husband is a five. So, um, and that all very much sounds like him. Just uh, the more information. It's just all about information gathering for him right now. And I mean, just constant head down. Now he did go and protest. We went last Friday, but that's not his natural thing mm -hmm. to want to go out and do for sure. Um, and having the five wing I do, I totally, I can totally relate to um, the pandemic and all of us being grounded at home. We were perfectly content, <laughs> bubbled up in our home, at least for like the six, first six weeks. And then we all started getting a little crazy. Yeah. But, even yeah. fours and fives uh, have to get out sometime. Yeah, exactly. After six weeks. Of <laughs> exactly. <laughs> your breaking but point at is first, six weeks. We were like, oh, wow, <laughs> this is like our every day. Like, how lame are we? The rest of the world is going crazy. And we're like, what's the big deal? <laughs> so. Oh, I love, I love you fives and fours. That's beautiful. Yeah. Well, thanks. This is Melanie. My house sounds a lot like Michelle's. I'm, I think I'm a four wing five and my husband's a five and I've seen some, I thought he was like five wing four, but I've definitely seen some, some towards the, the six, but the castle defender uh, describes mm. us and we've gotten a new little play nickname of safety police of <laughs> wanting everything to be in order, but he definitely knows all the news every day can tell me everything. So it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and again, I think uh, uh, giving permission for people to be engaged in this issue and not have to be out protesting is, is what we really need to, um, because I think for introverts, that is not maybe a natural way for them to do that, but they can still use their beautiful gifts of observation or creativity uh, to be able to articulate, you know, social policy or to be able uh, or to articulate really good arguments um, that can also fuel movements. Um, and so I think they have a really unique and important role as we all do. And I will like to circle back to that. I know I'm the, um, whatever the dramatic one is. <laughs> the I'm four. definitely that. So I can really get like caught up in like going deep, deep, you know, and um, it's probably good. I don't always see it that way at the time, but it's probably good that he's a counterbalance because he's so flipping just, you know, logical yeah. about it. Mm -hmm. And like, um, and I just, you know, get yeah. all caught up in the emotion of it. Yeah. So. That's really good. You know, this four or five combination, it's really interesting that both of you are possible four or five combinations. That is one of those Enneagram pieces that's really interesting to me because um, four, fives think their emotions, they're not very expressive with them, but fours can be, you know, deeply, even though they're in, they go in with their emotions, that relationship sounds, is really interesting to me. And I can imagine there's a, you may call it balance of one another, or you may call it polarizing one another. Uh, yeah. matters kind of how that plays out. Um, it's probably a little of both. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> it, I think I do. I, I, I can I, learning the Enneagram has helped so much for that in that understanding. And someone was talking about the grace earlier because I could not understand why he didn't want that intensity or to go that deep, deep. And he's so up in his head. It's just not that's just not the way he processes or moves through the world. So um, what do you I think he would say that. about you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that you're overly um, emotional? Yeah, probably so. Yeah. Irrational. Probably so. Yeah. That I'm more reactive. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you all make a good powerhouse couple though, right? I mean, if you can, yeah, if we can be in a healthy place, for sure. And we've yeah. gotten better with age, obviously, and understanding and a lot of therapy. <laughs> but, yeah. but um, yeah, it can be very good. We can be a very good balance for each other, for sure. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Melanie, did you want to jump back in? Oh, I was just 
I was just feeling empathy <laughs> for Michelle <laughs> talking about Thank people you. not wanting to go as deep as we want to go on these things. Sometimes it's lonely how deep I want to dive into the ocean of my soul to talk about these things. And uh, um, I, I'm so grateful for the Enneagram that I can laugh at myself now. Um, my, I'm, my art is uh, comics, so I like to, to do comics which bring the words and the drawing together for me, so. Yeah, but uh, Michelle, I I see you, I feel you, I hear you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> My you. My sister, four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. I love when people connect on their enneagram. Mm -hmm. I'm but right you along. four, you fours <laughs> are like you. You're kind of ambiguous, right? Like about oh, we're all fours the same, and yet we're not the same, right? So you're kind of ambiguous about. We don't right. want to be like anyone else, right? Isn't that yeah. the thing is we're the individualists. That yeah. <laughs> unique. No one is unique as us. us. Right. <laughs> You're and all think, unique in the same way. I don't know if you all, Amber unique. and Melanie, can you speak to being the artist too. I think that yeah. plays into the whole artist. We're unique Absolutely. and special. And, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> it's been the keystone of my life, trying yeah. to find <laughs> authenticity and how different I am. <laughs> right. I'm so special. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> but then, yeah, but then at the same time, four have a fours have a humbleness about them at the same time. It's like, oh, we're special, but, you know, you know, we, we still love everybody at the same time. So we try not to put ourselves too high on that, <laughs> on that pedestal. So next week, I would love for y'all to join back in if you can, because I think the way y'all are parsing and, and identifying with this, uh, the four because next week we'll look at the heart triad so um if you get a chance to come back on i would love to hear more of that wisdom just a quick question jed i'd like to know what triad the four and the five falls in is it the heart or the mind or the instinct yeah they're actually in different triads that's why it's an interesting one so the four is in the heart triad and they're dealing with emotion uh image in different ways the five is actually in the head triad that's why when a triad changes and people have a wing of them, that's always interesting to me. And if they're in relationship with somebody that um, like a seven and an eight, right? They are similar in some ways and yet they're on different sides of a triad. So that's the four or five thing. So they balance the head and the heart as they're saying in an integrated way in their relationships, they can do that. They can also polarize each other. And so when we work with couples a lot with Enneagram work, that's one of the things the pursuit distance or that, you know, somebody owns all of the emotion for the family and somebody owns all of the head for the family. Um, and that's really to get couples to individuate. You really sometimes have to ask them to go uh, to a place that doesn't feel comfortable for them. Um, and in later stages of life, when we can do integration to integrate our head and our heart, um, that sometimes is the work. And if you're in relationship with somebody that's in a different triad, you have to be really careful to not let them own your unactualized part because that can happen in relationships pretty easily. Um, Carl Jung talked a lot about that, about a lot of times we move into relationship to actualize aspects of ourselves that we don't take responsibility for. So we feel them and we get them, but it's in relationship to another rather than cultivating them within ourselves. And we all do that, especially in the first half of life. That's why we marry people like that. And then, you know, seven years later, you're like, why did I marry somebody that, you know, is so opposite because you were trying to get it. And the key there is then to claim it and cultivate it within yourself so that the other person doesn't have to own it. Right. Well, I've got a follow-up question for you on that, and I don't mean to keep you up, but just in terms of what Melanie said when um, she was commiserating <laughs> with her fellow fours online, when, when she referred to going deep, so does that mean going deep into emotion with another? Because going deep, I'm sure, is applicable to all three of the, in the triad, just deep in a different way because intellectuals want to go deep in, 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 up here intellectually. Hard people might want to go deep emotionally. So I'm just curious as to 
the deep as in how that is defined. And so that discrepancy, because deep could mean different things for different people, right? Yeah. Anybody want to jump in there? I mean, I think for me, the deep that you spoke some worry of, Judd, about the depression, like, um, definitely I had some anxiety about um, my family getting out and my, I have elderly, older parents <laughs> and I just, you know, I, I fours, I, I read somewhere once fours, um, the thing that they're thinking about you is how you're going to die. Like we're not afraid to think, I mean, it causes anxiety, but it's also like we've delved into that really dark place. And so thinking about depression or death or those kinds of things that, I mean, at least that's something I've had. When I noticed my husband is a five is like destruction of all of humanity is where the he seems to go. Maybe the other fives or four wing fives can talk to that. To me, it's just like more personal darkness and for him it's all a humanity darkness so that's been where we've gone on the dark side and then but I, I, I tend to default to optimism and hope and utopian society so I, I bounce back eventually but but I've definitely worried about my family to the sorrow end. Thank you for that articulation yeah that's a good way to talk about going into our po individual apocalyptic versus col cultural apocalyptic kind of space. Anybody, any of the other fours want to speak to that? I would say, I, and I'm still very new to this, but when you ask what going deep means to me, it's very much about the desperately wanting to be known by other people and feeling like no one knows me. Um, and so when I think about what does it mean to have a deep conversation with someone or, or dive deep into something, it's about me being known and being seen for who I am. That's what that means to me. And I know that I have a hard time with my friends that um, can't, um, can't stay with feelings, I want to say, or don't want, you know, they, they like to stay on the surface because it's very uncomfortable for them to get into a deep conversation and talk about emotions and things like that. And that's just what I live for. Come, come to my house so I don't have to go out. So come to my house, sit on my couch and let's have- Drink red a, wine. A, drink some or, red wine and uh, like just get in there. drink of force, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> and maybe it'll be raining. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. That's my favorite day. <laughs> oh, you fours are so Predictable. unique. <laughs> I love it. That's why sevens love fours because you guys are just an experience. I mean, sevens don't want to talk about their emotions, but we love to watch other people have them because it's, <laughs> it's so entertaining. Like you all just go so dark and it's, yeah, for sevens, I love it. Not because I'm going to identify with you, but just because I like watching you go where you go. So. Which is why I'm very aware that eventually I have to, like, I have to make myself get out. And it takes yeah. a lot to get me out. But once I'm <laughs> out, I enjoy myself and it's good for me. Um, yeah. So. I was going to say, um, I agree with all of you. It's the same thing for me. Uh, me in particular, I go deep spiritually. Um, I go through, uh, I go to spiritual truths through myself and uh, through myself and through my relationships. And so um, I tend to spend my time just going over the, my experiences and those spiritual inclinations and uh, just developing some sort of wisdom from all that and just trying to process my experiences over my life. It's, it's like how I go deep, <laughs> so to speak. So, um, and I guess with that wing five, uh, it kind of puts it in a professor uh, type of, uh, I don't know, a type of energy. So like a, 
uh, emotional scientist, I guess. <laughs> like, yeah, I do the same thing with my kids. Uh, I do the same thing with anybody I encounter. So I'm always dissecting emotions uh, and spiritual uh, natures naturally. Mm -hmm. You all, you, you fours and fives know it's full moon, right? In fact, it's maybe happening right this very moment. Yes. <laughs> I think it is. This very moment, it may be 100% full. So anyway, yeah. all you guys that are into that, thanks for being on. I'm going to be howling tonight. So it could be interesting tonight, right? I mean, out there tonight, it'll be interesting to see if things get ramped up. Um, so. Strong energy tonight. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, we've got to move on, but gosh, that's so good. I love that you all are, thank you so much for sharing your experiences and parsing that for me, for all of us. It's just so helpful. All right, so we're going to move to the sixes. Um, um, so the six is the loyalist and the skeptic. Um, <clears throat> And um, so the sixes dealt with their early childhood environments by uh, creating a safety. They can often be some of the most, um, yeah, they deal with a lot of anxiety and safety issues. They, one is they're skeptics and the skepticism um, functions so that they can think about what might happen or what might go wrong so they can prepare for it and not be surprised. Being surprised for uh, sixes is difficult because for whatever reason, for different reasons, maybe they were hurt and they felt like the way I can keep from being hurt is to order myself and to uh, develop structures around me. And often that's, uh, uh, they're deeply committed to organizations because they provide safety for them. They're, they're loyal friends, again, because um, that provides a sense of safety for them as well, uh, deep kind of friendships like that. Um, so here we have the family loyalist, the warrior, and the social guardian. This, um, so they have different, there's two different types. There's the, um, uh, the one who runs from fear and the one that runs towards it. What are the people called that run towards fear? They're, um, oh, there's a word for this, but I forgot them. So six, sixes can be sixes, but they look different. And some will run away from the things that they're afraid of and some run towards them. So a lot of sixes are like these folks that <laughs> jump out of planes and bungee jump and do all this because they, they go towards their fear. Some, somebody help well, me. Well, your the word is counterphobic. Counterphobic. Thank you. That's exactly what I was looking for. So there's phobic and there's counterphobic sixes. They're both sixes, but they 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 move differently. So here you have the family loyalist and the warrior, right, moves towards their fear. They try to get to it and go through it, so they don't have to have, be afraid of it anymore. So it's a different way of dealing with fear and anxiety, but the motivation is similar. It's a, it's a form of fear or dealing with anxiety. Thank you, Fran. That's, that's really helpful. So um, I think six is here maybe manifesting differently around social change. Um, and um, uh, so I, uh, do we have some sixes on that want to talk some about what they're experiencing now and how they're engaging, not engaging? Um, <laughs> I, uh, for me, I'm looking at what needs doing, what can I do and what am I willing to do and trying to find a balance among those. Um, I'm sorry, my screen froze up there. I'm trying to get my, uh, screen back. I'm sorry, uh, you can keep going, Fran, or were you reading off the screen? I mean, I read, I read the three things for the sixes, and I, that was the first time I'd seen that way of organizing it, but, uh -huh. but I definitely relate to the ideas part and finding safety in ideas. So probably the warrior 
version of a six. Mm -hmm. um, so how does it, how's it feel like you're engaging or you most naturally engage in like social change? Or like the I've skeptics heard, are like, oh, it's never going to change, right? Is there a sense that uh, here we are, I knew we were going to be here? Um, I don't, you know, well, and I struggle. I keep landing back at six, but there's a lot of aspects of it that, that I don't quite relate to and maybe did at a younger age more. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, for me, for the last 25 years, I've worked with survivors of, of intimate partner and sexual violence. So... That's, uh, yeah. that's been part, part of how I've, I've contributed. Um, what I did in this particular thing, I didn't, I mean, I'm more introvert than not, didn't I? And I've done my share of being in crowds and screaming and yelling and protesting. And there's the skeptic part, perhaps, because I didn't really want to do that again. Mm -hmm. Plus, with the COVID stuff, it didn't seem like a great idea. I'm old. Um, so what I did do is I went to Kroger and bought a bunch of snacks and water and gave them to a coworker to deliver to the protesters. Well, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> right. And I think sixes, yeah, were the ones that were loading up on hand sanitizer and masks and all that as soon as, as, soon as that stuff began. And I, may be concerned about their own safety with protesters or... Um, well, and I think you may also see a lot of sixes on the police force um, oh, in yeah. terms of being the guardians and protectors of the status quo and the society and, and, and assuming that role. And one of the things about sixes is they can look really different. Um, you can have kind of the, the, the one who, who dresses the way everybody else does and does everything the way some authority tells them to and you have the kind that absolutely rejects authority and challenges authority so depending yeah. on the level of health sixes can look really different from one another more than other types there's less of a continuum and as i understand it yeah that's a really good point uh, there probably are a lot of protesters that may be sixes because one of the things sixes do if they feel like you've broken trust with them or you've not been loyal back to them specifically if you're an organization or an institution they will take it down like a lot of whistleblowers are sixes like when they well, say you okay that would probably be six going to three which which is the direction of disintegration and threes at their worst will stab people in the back for whatever their goal is yeah <laughs> right. It is. That is a six going to a three because a six at nine. And I think you were talking about you're kind of manifesting maybe more nine behaviors where you're a little more relaxed, less reactive, uh, can be a peacemaker, see different perspectives, have dealt with some of the anxiety and can uh, uh, have a rational, more rational response, maybe. I've wondered at times if I'm a very unhealthy nine or a comparatively <laughs> healthy six. <laughs> That is so funny, Fran. I like I'm at one point, I think this was a couple of years ago when I'd been doing Enneagram work for a while. I thought, have I been a really unhealthy five all of this time? Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, because now I'm feeling much more five ish. And I feel, you know, I, I, I'm hoping it's a seven going to a five. But mm -hmm. but I wonder that, too. I was like, maybe I've been a really unhealthy five <laughs> and I'm just acting out as a seven all this time. So who knows? Well, thanks. That's that's helpful, Fran. So um, we got a, a a few more minutes. Let me get through these. Um, thank you all, by the way. This is just so helpful and personally interesting to me. Um, so the seven, the positive planner, the enthusiast, the jack of all trades, master of none. Um, so the sevens report that they dealt with uh, kind of early childhood anxiety of being trapped in negative situations and so they went outside of themselves grasping to have experiences or uh, they're kind of adults with ADD um, they they called gluttons for experience um, and it's a way of escaping their own inner life that may be painful or it may be actually a way of escaping a situation that may be painful 
So they've learned to, they're, they're really integrative thinkers because they go from one thing to one thing to the other thing. Um, they can read a lot, be and do a lot. You know, the calendar of a seven has just got kind of one thing after the next. It keeps them uh, sometimes in their head because they are in the head triad and away from their own feelings. Um, but sevens could love a riot because it's just a, an incredible experience, right? I mean, in the energy, and I've been out in some of it, and I really like that piece about it. Um, and I have to be careful with that because um, the experience itself becomes what's engaging sometimes rather than the issue that I'm doing it around. So I'm a, I love a protest, and I love this energy of a crowd, I love concerts because there's this energy in it. And I can tend to be a sexual and a social. I am a social visionary, but I'm also the adventurer. I took off um, last week on a wanderlust trip uh, because I'd been, I felt like I owed it to myself because I'd been quarantined for a month and a half. And so I went, I didn't know where I was going to go. I just got in my car and my bike. And for a week, I just didn't, I just did whatever I wanted to do. I had no schedule, no plan. Um, so I'm definitely the adventurer, the social visionary. I think we can be really inspiring leaders. You know, I think we have a lot of energy and enthusiasm to inspire people. We have to really work with sticking in there um, and, and staying with something. I think we, we add a lot to that. Social movements at, at a healthy place. In the sevens that um, are have a wing of an eight, which is kind of the challenger, we really do have, like, if I'm going to say anything, I have a vision in my head and in my body and in my heart for a Louisville where, where everyone can thrive. Like, I actually feel like I can see it in my head. Um, and I feel like all this work that I'm doing right now with IPP is the social visionary um, I just have to be really con uh, diligent to stay with it rather than just creating thing after thing after thing. And the nice thing about, you know, these webinars is I just go from webinar to webinar to webinar. Um, some, some ways of dealing with my anxieties, but so anyway, that sevens, are there any other sevens on here that want to um, share? Yeah, I am. Um, I'm well, Seven, I'm really, cl I'm actually a peacemaker, but seven's really close. And um, I love, I love Susan that you've got nine, two, and seven, which yeah. basic, basically means you're a nine. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's what nines are always like, well, I can, I'm a little of that one, I'm a little of this one. It's true, yeah. too. I, I'm not saying it's not true. It's just that's, I love nines. Yeah. But yeah. what part of the seven here are you identifying with? Yeah, I, I so uh, related with you because I'm just all over the place and I'm just like in seminar heaven and, <laughs> and people don't know what city I'm in because I'm all over. Well, you know, I was wondering that too. Are you in Louisville now? Yeah, I'm in Louisville. Okay. <laughs> Last I thought you were on some coast or you had actually been taken up to the seventh level of heaven or something. I didn't know where you were. <laughs> oh, here I am. I, I, <laughs> moved from uh, Montreal back here. Okay. Well, it's great to have you back in our community. Anything else you would want to add to the to that? All right. Well, let's look at the eight and the nine, and then we'll... Oh, did somebody else want to jump in? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I just did a quiz while you were talking earlier. Oh, so I yeah. Was and when you were talking about new experiences and, and can't focus, gosh, that's me. Um, and I want to do new things. Yeah. Um, you know, I remember, like, I was determined I was going to go to the Woodstock reunion back in 1994. And uh, I had I had a rather overprotective mother and toxic, too, but that's a whole nother topic. Um and by gosh, you know, I put a notice in the paper and I was looking for people because I was dating at the time, worked at UPS and he couldn't get off work. But by God, I was going to go. And I, did, and I rented the van and I got the money from the other fellas and I wrote there with three men I didn't know. And I had such a blast and it was so much fun. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my. Yeah. So. Um, I kind of thought I might, the music, what was that for? 
I the four, remember. yeah. Sometimes but sevens and fours I'm, can test similar. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, yeah. fabulous. Fun, well, man. welcome to the seven crowd. We're going to be doing the head triad in two weeks. Um, so come back and uh, talk about your sevenness. Yeah. Thanks, Myra. Good to have you on. Thanks for sharing. Hey. All right. The eight, the protector. Um, so right, eights could be really uh, engaged right now. Um, so eights, again, are uh, the bosses, commanders in chief. They go out. They're in, they, we're, so we're moving back in. We're moving into the instinct triad, um, the gut triad, and dealing with anger. And their anger really is out front. So um, I imagine on a, a great, maybe not all, but a lot of the protesters may, not a lot, but eights would definitely like a protest. Right, they naturally go into protesting um, the commander, the group leader. Uh, I imagine several of the leaders of our really out there organizations may be eights. Um, so there's there's ahead, some friend. question as to whether our president is eight or three. Yeah, I uh, I think he is an eight. Wherever he is, he's not healthy. <laughs> <laughs> He's disintegrating around the, I'm sorry, that's a, a commentary that I may not be, but no. um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think he's an eight. Um, yeah, I don't think he's a challenger and I think he's disintegrating um, into a five, um, which is a really dark, uh, kind of a dark alone place. Um, um, the... Uh, an integrating eight is a two, right? So that can soften their, um, but uh, an eight right now that is for protecting of, of people's human rights and protecting uh, people that are marginalized can, can really be a great leader for uh, those kinds of movements that do take uh, that outward kind of energy. Um, fives right now, if a five goes to an eight, they can make really good leaders as well. Um, they see really well what's going on. They, they have to move into their extra version though for a five to integrate at an eight, but they can also be really good leaders. Um, have a lot of clarity about what needs to happen. Um, anybody want to jump in with eights? My experience is eights. I have the least amount of eights on Enneagram calls. They don't it's have just, time for this. <laughs> yeah, they probably, I don't know what they think about it. I do have a couple that I'll have on the panel that I've used in the past. Um, they don't like being on it, but, you know, I, I can rope them into to doing it. Um, so anyway, yeah, eights right. Go ahead. In, uh, where it says... Uh, the group leader part where it creates blind spots about personal needs. Like they don't personal needs, their own needs that they don't, they have blind spots about. I mean, I don't get it. Well, I think the sense in an organization, um, they may not create an organizational culture that tends to individual needs. If that, yeah, that whatever they're creating, um, yeah, may, may be blind to individuals kind of personal needs. Okay. Thank you. So let's end with the mediator. Um, the nine, um, so the nine can be the collector, the seeker or the community benefactor. So nines are peacemakers. So again, conflict was one of the reasons they lost their voice. Um, and healthy nines move to a three can be really great leaders as well because they can see a lot of perspectives. They embody a lot of perspectives. Um, and so nines really can see a lot of sides. So I imagine they can see the side of police officers. They can see the side of uh, those that are rioting. They can see the sides. They really have a beautiful gift of multiple perspective taking. And they can offer that, I think, in these times of crisis really well. I think they, um, uh, you know, at Interfaith Paths of Peace, our whole board ought to be nines because all those, they see really well 
perspectives. The challenge is if they lose sight of their own energy, if they lose their own voice in listening to the voices of others, that is the challenge for a nine. And they can move into apathy and sloth. And so this is where they have to be really careful that listening to all the voices, they don't lose a sense of where they are with it and lose that in anger that moves to right action. So um, nines can be great peacemakers, help us see perspectives where they could be challenging is if they don't ever move to action because they've lost a, a connection with their gut, their anger that moves them to right action. Um, so there you see the different, uh, in the different types based upon um, subtypes. <clears throat> I really quickly want to go to um, um, a couple of slides that I used a lot for organizations. For those that are doing social movement <clears throat> work, um, there are a couple of slides here that um, I use quite a bit. Um, for people wanting to engage in organizations and movements, a lot of times they have different needs that they have in these. Um, so this is uh, questions that Enneagram numbers will ask to engage in an organization or a movement. Um, so the eight, nine, and the one <clears throat> ask, the eight asks, is everyone effective, honest, and operating with integrity? A nine is everyone is clear, har harmonious, and respectful. A one is everyone talented and responsible. So if you're trying to get these numbers into your organization, these are the questions they may be asking um, <clears throat> or uh, concerned about if they're gonna engage uh, with you. A two, three, and a four. A three is asking, is everyone warm, supportive, and moving forward? A three, a two, that's a two, I'm sorry. A three would be asking, is everyone competent? focused and goal oriented and a four is asking is everyone self-expressive and connected and creative in the head triads they would be asking a five is everyone capable and autonomous and low maintenance a six is asking is everyone loyal trustworthy and like-minded a six and then a seven is everyone stimulating equal and fun so um, <clears throat> that's just something to pay attention to in organizational life. Here's one on conflict and anger, <clears throat> which we have a lot going on right now. Eight, uh, anger is just energy. I love it. They love their energy. Uh, and anger is a, a definitely a tool they use. Nines is I don't get angry. Right? So they will uh, not feel their anger. They're disconnected. Anger question mark. No, resentment. Yes. So ones uh, work not with their anger, their anger goes inward um, <clears throat> and come at, can come out as a form of resentment. The two, the three, and the four um, with anger. Two is uh, what me cause conflict. They don't see themselves as doing that. Threes don't waste my time with this. Threes don't have time for those kinds of energies because they need to be performing. Fours is why did you do this to me? Kind of the victim <clears throat> around the four mentality. Fives, no problem, just detach <clears throat> with anger. And sixes, I didn't mean to cause any problems, kind of some guilt there. And eights, uh, sevens, uh, I'm out of here. We're going to get in our car and with our bike and just leave. So those are what they do in perceptions of anger and conflict. So those may be some reactions that are happening. So we've got uh, uh, eight minutes left. What I'd like to do is just kind of open it up to final comments, reflections. <clears throat> the way I like uh, to do comment uh, uh, end is just kind of a checkout. Um, we've got quite a few people on the call, so we won't have time for <clears throat> what's been insightful. So you got, 15, 20 seconds. What's been meaningful, exciteful? What have, what have you learned? Um, what's been helpful? So let's just kind of harvest what's been interesting to folks. Anybody's welcome to, un 
actually, let's just go through the crowd and you can either respond or not respond. And I'm just going to go through the screen the way I see it. So um, I'm going to go Ida, Fran, and then Janine. Um, could you all do a checkout? Ida, could you start us? Um, I was wondering, very insightful, so that I did get some takeaways in terms of the subgroups. <clears throat> I had a question with regards to, is it, are those three subgroups something that one could move through phases in life? So for instance, I'm a nine, and for a very long time, I see myself in that seeker description, but I find now with the change of, and the shift in my environment with the pandemic and everything going on, that I'm, slowly but very surely and definitively moving into the benefactor area. So is that a thing that naturally happens or does that get, is it prompted from an outside? Yeah, I think the way that often they talk about in the Enneagram that subtypes are kind of these predispositions to certain categories that may not necessarily change. Although, um, so the, what you may be talking about is moving to integration or you may be talking about healthier manifestations of your number, which would change the way in which you're understanding and feeling yourself. But I kind of think the subtypes are these kind of overall tendencies that may not necessarily change, although they may soften. Right. I don't know if that, yeah. Thank you, yes. <clears throat> and yes, thank you, this was very enlightening. Great, Fran, can you check out? Sure. Um, I've, I've missed having a group to talk Enneagram with. I love Enneagram and I love learning about it. Um, my main takeaway today was I wrote down Peter O'Hanrahan Enneagramwork.com, which was what I guess that subtype chart came from. So I'll mm. probably look that up. Great. So, so thanks for doing this. I mean, I'm, I'm very happy to be back thinking Enneagram. <laughs> Great, yeah, and we'll look forward to having you in the in the community of practice if that works for you. Janine, welcome. You want to check out? Yeah, um, this is all fairly new to me. Um, so I had just taken a test, two different tests before I before this <laughs> before we started. So um, so yeah, I'm still trying to plug myself in, but mm. enjoyed this tremendously. I could see myself. Good. Well, it's good to have you here. Thanks. Thanks. Judy, would you like to check out? And then Lou Ann? And you can check out if you want. If you don't want, you that's okay too. I'm going to unmute you there. I think you're muted. <clears throat> you may be having trouble unmuting. There, there you go. We got you. Um, yeah, it's been fun to use this language again. I, I was in a group for a while and had these discussions and it's just always interesting to get back into the, the nitty gritty so that that's most of what I've enjoyed today. Fabulous, thank you Judy. Luann, could you check out and then Laura next? Hi, um, I'm very new to this. I literally took the test just a few hours ago um, so I can relate to what Janine said. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do some more work, but this has all been very interesting and I love just learning about it and I've got a lot more to learn. So it's been fun. Well, welcome. Welcome to the Enneagram journey. Thank Hope you. You can join us again. Laura, would you mind checking out? Sure. I am new to this as well. Although I took the test quite some time ago, <clears throat> numbers are so close together that it was interesting, like listening to the different things. I could relate in very various numbers. Um, so it's a little confusing to me. You know, they said I was um, a five and a one because I was one number away. Then the next number is like two numbers away. So, um, and down the chart. So anyways, it was interesting and uh, look forward to coming back. Thank you. Great, Laura, good to have you. One and fives often test similar and we can get into that um, some other time, but there's some reasons why they, they test similar. So thanks, Laura. Susan, you mind uh, checking out? I love that, that we understand each other and ourselves a little deeper, just the understanding and just 
know that we have the same goal, but everybody's so needed with their different different gifts to make this happen. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. May it be so. Maggie, would you mind checking out if you'd like? I would love to. This is the first time I get to do that in these sessions. Um, I am really intrigued with how closely the Enneagram defines us. I'm a nine, and this last week and a half since all this turmoil in the city has come forth, a, a number of people have reached out to me to help them understand what's going on. And the one thing that I was always amazed about was how people didn't see things from another perspective. And now in listening to you today, Judd, I see that that's because that's what a nine does. That's not what everybody does. Mm -hmm. So I love how it takes all nine of us to work together to get the whole. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you for sharing. That is the vision, right? That we're all yes. engaged with our different gifts to make change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maggie. Good to have you here. Thank Terry? You. The chart on conflict was a huge light bulb. I just said to some people like day before yesterday that when I get angry, I spend like three days trying to figure out just the right thing to say and then it turns into resentment and anyway um it's sort of hilarious that i just sort of named that instinct <laughs> just a couple of days ago but so thank you for that and Jed, if you want to share at some point of uh, people anyone that you recommend for like one-on-one -on -one sessions like for coaching i would appreciate that as well thank you great thanks terry melanie could you check out and then amber Yeah, I thought it was really um, helpful to listen through all the descriptions and figure out where my dad's anger landed on the uh, chart so I could have more compassion for him. And um, one thing I had read about the Enneagram is you're, you're not supposed to, um, you're not supposed to label someone else. They're supposed to identify themselves. You might have suspicions but what you should say is, I want you to look at this and tell me which one you think you are. And I would have labeled my dad as a three because he was a salesman. But he told me he was an eight. And, mm. and that became evident at the beginning of the pandemic when we had a tangle over whether or not he should go out to the hardware store <laughs> as a 79-year-old man. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Well, good. Thank. You. That's a great uh, application of the enneagram. So yeah, it helps us be more compassionate, you know. And then mm -hmm. laughing at yourself, like especially fours, for being so emotional. It's a wonderful, powerful tool. I'm so grateful for it. So grateful to hear all the other crazy fours out there too. Great. We'll look forward to hearing more from our crazy fours next week if you're on. So, Amber, you mind checking out? Yeah, sure. Um, it was just really interesting to, of course, hear all the perspectives of the different um, Enneagrams um, and just hearing uh, their life experience with those. And I just think it's really important for us to to settle into the, the natural roles that we have so we can bring our gifts forward in, in the most positive and productive way. So don't, don't be ashamed of any darkness that might come from that energy fours and fives, uh, just use that so-called darkness. I don't really like to use darkness, but use it as power and um, just mm. integrate your, uh, into your work, into your relationships. And just know that uh, we're all of these, <laughs> all of these energies, but we uh, were incarnated here for a particular purpose. And uh, we have a particular energy signature that we process ourselves through. So. It's important to to find ourselves through that energy and work with it. So beautiful, thank you. And the folks that uh, um, I've got, there's somebody here, maybe a seven. Your name's not up. Would you like to check out? Name. Okay, hi. I'm yeah. Back. I didn't realize I was leaving my name when I replaced that. Um, this opened up my awareness of all kinds of possibilities that it can be in the Enneagram. To really understand it, I need to do some base work and foundation program. Well, it's good to have you here and hope you'll come back and uh, we'll do some more of that work together. Thank you. Okay. Michelle, could you, would you want to check out? Sure. Um, 
I appreciate the, the validation. Um, I appreciated uh, meeting some other fours and, and um, uh, hearing and being validated by them. And I would say, Amber, you know, that I said you didn't like using the word darkness. And I would say it's more of a depth or, you know, use mm -hmm. that word. You know, the gift is the depth. It's not really dark or doesn't have to be. Um, but, and I really appreciated you, Judd, the encouragement to, um, think about how we can use our creative sides, um, to make a change. So I'm going to think about that some more. So I appreciate that. Beautiful. Thanks for being on the call. Sarah, you have the last word you want to check out. My goodness. The last word. Um, <laughs> Well, I am so new to this, so new, in fact, that I'm like, what test? That's how <laughs> new I am. Um, but um, I do very much appreciate um, some validation also. Um, I've learned a lot from this hour with you all, and um, I feel really good that I don't have to feel invisible, mm. even though you can't see me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, thank you very much. Yeah, Sarah, thank you. Appreciate you being on. <clears throat> so welcome, everybody. This is the beauty of a community of practice. I mean, there'll be all kind of different ways that we share, uh, learn from each other. And again, the purpose is to develop compassion, self-awareness for ourselves and the ways in which we show up, but also to have deep compassion for other people, knowing um, they're weird and messed up just in a different way than we are. <clears throat> so actually not messed up. We're all uh, Amber said it much more beautiful. We all have an energy signal uh, that's different and that we are called to be that signal in the world for a greater, what they call the cosmic dance. That's what I love about the Hindu, or the um, Advaitic tradition is that they understand this all in a cosmic dance and we ha all have to play our unique role. That's why um, we're here. We can't play somebody else's role. We can't be another Enneagram number. We can be fully and wholly ourselves and then we can offer that to the healing of creation and that's the vision of the Enneagram work and I'm so grateful for all the wisdom that was shared today and hope you'll come back and join us um, next week for another round where we'll look at the two the three and the four thank you all for being with us today thank you all for those that have joined us on Facebook and may you have a blessed and holy full moon weekend so uh, use that energy to create a create a, a more dynamic, crazy world. So you're welcome to unmute yourself and say goodbyes and have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 I have a question for you Bye. afterwards. Quick sure, I'm, I'm here. Okay. Well, when it, yeah.